So now that we've fit our uh, model, basically, to the data, we got out our constants, as promised. We got some warnings um, because I didn't set the regularization parameter. But as I mentioned, it's not an issue here because we only have these two values. We really can't overfit our data. Now we want to apply that model back to the data to get the uh, kind of expected values here and uh, then overplot that on the, on the data so that we can see if it, if it works well. So the applying that model to the data is just doing a transform. And so um, we can make a, let's how about with, uh, with linear fit, okay. which would simply be taking our linear regression model and using it to transform the linear regression data. And that should spit out a new data frame for us, uh, which has an, an added uh, column that at this point would be called prediction. Um, I actually want to call it something else. Uh, unless, did we tell our linear regression? Ah, no, there it is. So the prediction column, when it is applied, will be called uh, Pmax temp. Okay, so we should have our Pmax temp here. And now I just want to add that into the plot. So we have our day of year and we have our max temp. We're no longer going to pull this data out of with DOY info. We are going to pull it out of the uh, with linear fit. And I want to pull out one more, I'll call it P max temp. It is not value. It should be, assuming we've done things correctly, this P max temp. And now the question is, how do we overplot these things? Um, there is a different method that's it's actually a little bit uh, more complex, in part because I actually don't want just two sets of dots. I could use a, a slightly simpler method. Uh, just called scatter plots if I wanted to have two sets of dots. But I want to now have the ability to add lines uh, because I actually want the, the fit to be drawn as a line and the first values to be dots as we've been drawing them before. And so the scatter plots full take some tuples that specify uh, the data that we want. So it turns out that it helps us if we define a few things as constants. I want to define the symbol size for the first things that I'm plotting. And the reason I want to do this up here is because of the way that implicits work in Scala, uh, these things go inside of tuples and the implicit conversions won't be made. The size of the second one, I'm going to use zero. So I don't want the dots to show at all. I want to connect them with lines. Both of them will be drawn in black. So I'll make my color be that black ARGB as a plot int series. OK. Um, and because I'm going to draw a line here, I also need to define the stroke that I want to use, which whoop, renderer dot capital R renderer dot stroke data, which the first argument is the width of the line in pixels. I'm going to go with one and then dashing information, uh, which I don't want any on this. And now I just need to make it so that my arguments here fit. So the first thing that we're going to pass in is going to be a, an array of the tuples that we want. The first tuple has our x and our y for what we want to plot here. I'm going to move title 
down a line because these values, the title, the X label, and the Y label will come at the end. Uh, I have the X, the Y, uh, then my color, then the size for the symbols, and then I have three more arguments. One that specifies the type of line for the first data set, or the how things are connected on the lines. The first one, I don't want them connected at all, so I just say none. The other two are error bars for this, which also I don't want anything on. Comma, and then I'm going to repeat this again, almost, and I'll go ahead and hit enter, and then close off the parentheses for the array. Oop, I left out a comma between my nuns. Now, of course, I believe this should an array of that to that, that to that. We found array of double, array of double. Mm. I need to specify up here because once again, because these are in tuples, quad double series. I have to specify that I want these to do the implicit conversions to double series. Okay, that makes this compile. We need to make a few more changes so it'll actually plot up the way that we want. I want the same color. I want to use the second size, which will be zero. And then this, I'm going to change from a none to a sum. And this sum has uh, a tuple in it of the first thing is in our case, I want all the points connected, so I'm just going to give it an integer as a plot int series arrow the stroke that we want. So this is actually effectively a function on these, and we could connect multiple lines. Uh, we don't really care about that right now, uh, but this should plot up the values that we calculated as a line over the top of the data that we were trying to fit. And here we go. This is the final plot. You can see that we have a nice line here uh, for the sinusoidal fit. It actually has a minimum somewhere in the late part of January and a maximum around day 180. Uh, so it's probably the end of July there. It seems like a pretty good fit to this. And by taking these coefficients that we have, turns out so that squared plus that squared, add them together, take the square root, that gives us the amplitude of this curve. And that's really what we were going for. So we we're doing a linear fit so we could get the amplitude of the change between summer and winter looks like that's working well, but we would need to do that instead of just for one cluster for all of our clusters, all 2,000 of them, so that then we could feed that in and run another clustering algorithm, see if we can find uh, climate groups. So we'll come back and we'll play with that more in a later video.